Charlie Kirk dismantles a student's claim that there is no border crisis under Biden's administration. And in fact, Biden is handling the border better than Donald Trump. You guys, we're going to be jumping into this segment in just one second. But first, welcome back to the channel, everyone. Thank you all for being here. If you could please really quickly smash that like button for the algorithm, I would greatly appreciate it. Also hit that link down in the description below and subscribe to me over on that free speech video platform. Greatly appreciate everyone that's over there already. Let's go ahead and jump on into this. Which one was managing the border better? I think Joe Biden. I will justify that. I will justify it. Please. Economically, when an immigrant comes to this country, even an illegal immigrant, even someone who does not have high level, high earning skills, they contribute more to the economy as a whole than they take away. They contribute to fixed expenses like the military. They provide more into social benefits than they take. And if we're talking about issues with like job scarcity, what we actually have is an issue with job distribution and the way our systems are set up to take advantage of poor Got working it. class Americans. So, so do you believe in borders at all? Um, I believe that practically, yes. I believe that there does need to be major reform in the way we deal with borders. Okay, so let's just talk about really quick what he's saying right there. Him saying that there is a net positive to illegal immigrants coming to the country. They don't take more than they make. Uh, for the American taxpayer, you know, I, I'm sure many of you guys are listening to that, scratching your head, what on earth is he talking about? Well, there's really no basis for this. In fact, there, this is obviously a difficult field to track when it comes to illegal immigration because these people technically don't really exist. But you do have groups such as the Center for Immigration Studies. And what they have right here, we have welfare use by nativity and legal status. U.S. born, headed households, you have in blue. Orange is legal immigrant households. Purple is illegal headed households. You have this massive chunk right here. But, you know, you don't even need, because, again, this is difficult information to track. However, it would be a little bit easier when it comes to, like, welfare and social programs that are being used. That could be a little bit easier to track. But you're looking at people coming across the border. You're looking at people that are getting uh, free housing, free health care, free food, free, uh, even in some places in the country, free money. How on earth could this kid's claims possibly be true with all of those expenses? We know illegal immigration costs taxpayers hundreds of billion dollars a, a year. We, we know that to be a fact. So when it comes to this claim right here, there's really just no basis to support what he's saying. I, I just want to make sure you understand, how many people do you think are coming across the border every day? I do not have the exact numbers on that, yes. but I think it's a reasonable amount. I'm going to probably say in the thousands, tens of thousands. Yeah, 10 to 15,000 a day. So to put that annualized, that's 3.65 million a year minimum, sure. right? That is the population more than some U.S. states. You're saying it's all a benefit. First of all, tell that to the family of Lake and Riley, okay? Secondly. <laughs> yep. Big time. This is another thing that we run into in the street when we're talking to people. A lot of people will try to bring up this argument like, oh, just bring in as many people as you can, low wage earners, as many as you can to compete with the bottom earners in our country. There's going to be no problem with that at all. There's going to be no issues there. And they completely ignore the other issues when it comes to mass illegal immigration. We'll table the cultural aspect of the whole conversation. We'll We'll, we'll table the lack of assimilation. We'll just talk about crime for a quick second. You're feeding into cartels. You're making them richer than their wildest dreams because all of these people coming across are paying a fee, $3,000 to $15,000, depending on where they are in the world and where they're coming from. So that section for, you know, that, that area of business for the cartels, human smuggling is booming. And then that aside, you're, you're talking about unvetted migration, of people, we don't know who these people are. They come to the country, they commit crimes, and they murder people like Lake and Riley. And they totally ignore that. They, they do not want to talk about the horrific reality of illegal immigration. All right, everyone, let's take a few moments to talk about today's sponsor, the people that made this video possible, Allegiance Gold. So as we close in on the election, it's really no surprise that Donald Trump is gaining support among all Americans, especially the working class. While many Americans are struggling, the Biden administration continues to attempt to gaslight the American people, saying that the economy has never been better, when we all know the country's facing challenges. 
Among those, rising inflation, rising debt, and rising interest rates. There is a reason why so many of you guys watching have invested in gold because it stands on its own as a beacon of stability and also over the last five years, it's also almost doubled in value. Allegiance Gold has done things the right way from the beginning, so it's really no coincidence that they've earned the highest trust ratings in the precious metals industry. They have five stars with TrustLink and an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. Allegiance Gold can help you protect your IRA or 401k with physical gold and silver, or if you prefer, you can have it delivered securely to your front door. And right now you guys can get up to $5,000 in free silver on a qualifying investment when you go to protectwithklug.com or call 866-335-KLUG. Protect your financial future today. Visit protectwithklug.com or call 866-335-KLUG. I'll put a link down in the description below. Let's get back in the video. Secondly, I asked you a question. Who was managing the border better? We don't have a border under Biden. You arrive, you're in. We've gotten rid of DNA that, testing. That is just not true. Hold on a second. How many people are being turned away at the border? Are we doing DNA testing, background checks? But you mean like turned away at the border? Lots of people are turned away at the border. Immigrating Who? to the U.S. legally, like, the majority Hold of on, people no, no. don't if have you, visas. If you show up in Ciudad Juarez at the other side of El Paso and you claim asylum, welcome, buddy. You get a free ticket to the interior United States, cell phone, benefits, social security number, and you are now in the United States of America despite breaking the laws. And that's fine. We just have a difference of opinion on this. I just, I find it so interesting of someone who's trying to like justify the breaking coming into our country and the breaking of our laws, but I, I, for, you have for, a right to that opinion, so. No, 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 I don't think it's an opinion. I, I don't necessarily know like where you're getting these statistics, but I don't think Joe Biden is just like, come on in. Like everyone's opened the border. No, he it's absolutely, the, like, he absolutely did that. No, he is not, he is not. <laughs> yeah, that's what reinstating catch and release is. You enter the country illegally, you, these people are going directly to border patrol agents. They're not trying to avoid them. The people that are trying to avoid them are probably like on the terror watch list or something like that. Maybe cartel members, they don't wanna be captured, right? But the overwhelming majority of the people that are coming into the country illegally are going directly to CBP. That's why they're doing it. That's why they're going to CBP because they know that all they have to say is that they're claiming asylum, these magic words, and they get let into the country. Ask any reporter, any of these amazing reporters, you know, uh, Julio Rosas, Jorge Ventura, any of the people down at the border, they'll tell you it's it's minimum 80 to 90% of the people coming over illegally are being let into the country. That is what reinstating catch and release does. It's such a joke that we're at the point where cartels are showing up with massive buses at the southern border and just dropping everyone off. That's how much of a joke it is right now. It's kind of interesting when it comes to this conversation, you know, this is very similar to the stuff that we've seen in recent videos of mine when I'm talking to people about Biden's border crisis. And it's this sort of, I've mentioned this before, it's sort of like just these horse blinders that they have on. They don't want to see any of the negatives when it comes to mass illegal immigration. They don't want to see any of that. They just want to have their talking points, whether they be true or false. If you try to show them the truth, they'll likely not want to see it. And this is a big problem in our country today. You know, you should be striving to see the truth. You should be striving to learn the facts. And that's obviously not the case here. He has not been like that. And, that, and, yeah, and, yes, and, and more than that, what actually we need when we're talking about immigration reform, we need to make immigration more accessible for legal immigration. Now, how about this? Mm. Or we need to put our own U.S. citizens first ahead of foreigners. <laughs> yeah? Isn't the whole idea of a government that the, U, the citizens of the country should come above the citizens of another country? Uni United States citizens, we are immigrants. I, like, hold no, on, no, 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 hold on a second. Our, a second. Some are immigrants here. Some are descendants of settlers. Settlers and immigrants are two different things. Settlers come to a barren land and build something new. Immigrants come to a country that's already barren? built. Barren? Yeah, barren. Like, okay. I don't know, Plymouth Rock. Okay, <laughs> I, I, I won't get into that. I'm, I, you know what, I'll let more questions get. No, so but no, I, I, I appreciate the clarity. So the truth really comes out right here at this last segment where he's saying, you know, we are immigrants. We should be opening up the border. We should be you know, doing all of these things to allow as many people into the country as possible. That's because the left has been so conditioned to have absolutely no problem with mass migration. They don't see any of the negatives. They don't want to pay attention to any of the negatives. The bottom line is this is not your country. We're all immigrants and therefore you have to open up the floodgates. That's the argument that's being made. And that's the argument that's being made when we're on the street. This is a very consistent position across the board. They don't care if they're bringing in 100 million people over the next 15 years. They don't care because we're all immigrants. We're all comparable to the people that built this country. 
Even the people that are coming here for financial reasons, hopping on social you know, welfare programs, getting free food, free housing, all that stuff, totally comparable to people that came here in the early 1900s. But Charlie brings up a really good point, you know, when it comes to why are we not focusing on Americans? We have all these issues in this country right now. People can't afford to buy homes. People can't afford groceries. People are having trouble getting raises at their job or getting jobs that are providing for their family. You have all these problems. And it's like, why on earth during this time are we talking about bringing in even 10 million illegal immigrants in the last four years? Why is that even a conversation? These people are putting America last, but they know that. They don't like America. They despise America. And when you despise and don't love your country, there is no desire to really protect it. You protect what you love. So you have a lot of people making the arguments trying to make America better for Americans right now. Even people that come here legally, that assimilated, that are proud Americans, making America better for people right now. And that's being painted by the mainstream media, the legacy media, as this sort of bigoted position, right? Putting America first. Let me know what you guys think about this video down in the comment section below. I'm really curious to hear your your uh, thoughts on this exchange. I thought this was pretty interesting just because this is pretty typical and Charlie definitely pushes back and, and as the title says, sets the record straight. I think he did a pretty amazing job right here. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. If you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe for more videos and hit that bell notification button so you're notified next to my post. And I'll catch you all in the next video.